Luke chapter 22, this uh, tells of Christ's instituting of the Lord's Supper. Uh, they ga he gathered with the disciples to celebrate the Passover, and it was at the pa this Passover feast that he uh, ordained and commissioned the Lord's Supper. And so uh, let's look at that together. Verse 14 of Luke chapter 22. And when the hour came, he reclined at table and the apostles with him. And he said to them, I have earnestly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. And he took a cup. When he had given thanks, he said, Take this and divide it among yourselves. For I tell you that from now on I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. And he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And likewise the cup, after they had eaten, saying, This cup, this cup that is poured out for you is the new covenant in my blood. But behold, the hand of him who betrays me is with me on the table. For the Son of Man goes as it has been determined. But woe to that man by whom he is betrayed." And they began to question one another, which of them it would be who was going to do this. We'll stop at that point. This is the institution of the Lord's Supper. Let's bow our heads. Father in heaven, we uh, are privileged each Lord's Day uh, to partake of the Lord's Supper. We thank you, Lord, for that great privilege. We pray that uh, you would grant us greater uh, understanding uh, and uh, and that then we may have greater joy in its celebration. For Jesus' sake, amen. You may please be seated. And uh, would you turn with me in the back of your Trinity Psalter hymnals, Lord's Day 28, Lord's Day 28 of the Heidelberg Catechism that's found on page 884 on to page 885. There are uh, three questions, and you'll notice they are lengthy, um, but let's uh, do our normal procedure. I will ask the question, and we'll answer them together uh, aloud. So question 75 of Lord's Day 28, how does the Holy Supper remind and assure you that you share in Christ's one sacrifice on the cross and in all His blessings? In this way, Christ has commanded me and all believers to eat this broken bread and to drink this cup in remembrance of Him. With this command came the promises. First, as surely as I see with my eyes the bread of the Lord broken for me and the cup shared with me, so surely His body was offered and broken for me and His blood poured out for me on the cross. Second, as surely as I receive from the hand of him who serves and taste with my mouth the bread and cup of the Lord, given me as sure signs of Christ's body and blood, so surely he nourishes and refreshes my soul for eternal life and has crucified body and poured out blood. Now, what does it mean to eat the crucified body of Christ and to drink his poured out blood? It means to accept with a believing heart the entire suffering and death of Christ in this way to receive forgiveness of sins and eternal life. But it means more. Through the Holy Spirit, who lives both in Christ and in us, we are united more and more to Christ's blessed body. And so, although He is in heaven and we are on earth, we are flesh of His flesh and bone of His bone. And we forever live on and are governed by one spirit, as the members of our body are by one soul. Where does Christ promise to nourish and refresh believers with his body and blood as surely as they eat this broken bread and drink this cup? In the institution of the Lord's Supper, the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. 
Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. This promise is repeated by Paul in these words. The cup of blessing which we bless, is it not a participation in the blood of Christ? The bread that we break, is it not a participation in the body of Christ? Because there is one bread, we also are any are one body, for we all partake of the one bread. In Lord's Day 25, it uh, introduced for us the, um, the means of grace. Um, and so this was uh, three weeks ago uh, that uh, we looked at that, Lord's Day 25, uh, and there I, uh, the means of grace are the preaching of the Word and the uh, sacraments, the uh, participation in the sacraments. Uh, these are the means of grace by which God uh, uh, increases our faith, and through the preaching of the Word, He, he gives us faith. And I focus at that point on uh, the preaching. Uh, made few comments about uh, the sacraments, but I focused on preaching because I knew that uh, Lord's Days 26 and 27 dealt with baptism, and then 28 and forward deal with the Lord's Supper. And so, I, uh, knowing that we would be delving into the sacraments uh, on that Lord's Day, I focused on um, the preaching and the importance of preaching and hearing the Word. Uh, we looked at that from Ezekiel chapter 37 uh, and the, the Valley of Dry Bones, just to bring that back to your recollection. But we're continuing the means of grace here, and uh, having the last couple of weeks uh, looked at baptism and what that means and what that entails, we uh, now focus upon the Lord's Supper. Now, the privilege of being a professing member of the Church of Jesus Christ, is that we can come and partake in the Lord's Supper. And we're a church that does that weekly and, uh, and are committed uh, to that as much as we are able. And the question is, how is the Lord's Supper a means of grace? How is the Lord's Supper a means of grace? What is the Lord's Supper? And what does it mean? What does it mean for me and for you? Um, so we're looking at, at, at this matter today, and uh, you know we might say it's, it's a very we're looking at it at a very basic level today, but that's okay. Um, the catechism is uh, written in part uh, to train children, and so it's good for us to for our children to hear some of these base, very basic uh, truths. And and the one of one important thing about baptism is that it is a sign. It's a sign. Now, we talk about it's a sign and a seal, and I'll get to the seal in a moment, but it's a, it's a sign. It, 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 it's a sign of something. It, it pictures something. Um, so, when we uh, have from this table bread and wine, these are visible signs, meaning they... they they represent something else. They represent something beyond themselves. They're signs. Um, we also see something happening to them. The bread is, is broken, and the, the, the wine is poured. Uh, so, w what is happening? Well, a sign serves to uh, point to something else. It signifies something else. Um, and so, what to what do these signify? The broken bread signifies the broken body of our Lord Jesus Christ upon the cross. It signifies His broken body, that His flesh was actually pierced, both with uh, nails through His hands and, and His feet, but also with a spear. The, the body was broken, and the blood... Uh, is signified by the wine. The, uh, the poured wine signifies that the blood of Jesus Christ was poured out on the cross. And the point is that both the bread and the wine focus our attention or direct our attention 
to the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. That's the point. Um, that he gave himself as a sacrifice for our sins. But they're not just signs, uh, they're, they're seals, uh, or the sacrament is a seal um, in which God makes promises. And uh, question 75 of, uh, of Lord's Day 28 brings this out so wonderfully, these promises that as surely as I see with my eyes the bread being broken and, and, and given to me and, and the cup being shared with me, just as surely as that is happening, and we know how surely that is, don't we? When we come up and, 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 and grab a piece of bread, we feel it, we, we take it back to our seats, we, we take a cup of, of, of wine and we bring it back to our seats, That's a, it surely is happening, it's a, it really is uh, taking place. And just as surely, it says, as that, is, we, it, it is as surely as Christ's body was offered and broken for me and His blood poured out for me on the cross. Just as surely. Uh, so that, that really, you know, needs to get into our psyche. It needs to get into our brains. Wow, you know, I'm... I'm feeling this bread in my hands, and I know it's real, it's real, it's, it's sure, it's, it's a certainty that it's there. So surely did Christ give his body for you. That's what the sacrament is saying. It's a promise that that is so. But more than that, um, as surely as I receive it and, and, and taste it with my mouth, that, that it's given to me as sure signs of Christ's body, so surely he nourishes and refreshes. And so, so not only is there a certainty that Christ gave his body and blood, but that Christ actually is now surely nourishing me and uh, refreshing me in, in my soul for eternal life with his body and blood. So there's these promises that are made to us, these assurances, these uh, pledges, if you will, that this sacrifice is, certain, is a certainty and will most certainly, um, that the, the, the blood of Christ shed and the body of Christ broken um, is certainly for the forgiveness of my sins. It's certainly for the forgiveness of my sins. Um, it's a pledge for that, um, a guarantee that uh, therefore we are nourished. It is in that way. It is most certainly a means of grace, and it is instituted um, by Christ here in this passage. But the background is the Passover, and that's important that we see that and we make that connection in the Old Testament. Um, children, you might recall in the uh, in the Old Testament when. Um, Moses went to Pharaoh, and he said, let my people go, remember? And Pharaoh wouldn't do it. And, and there were nine plagues that happened, and he still said no. And so there was going to be one more plague, a tenth plague that, took, that would happen. And uh, do you remember what that tenth plague was? That all the firstborn died. except for those who among the Jews or among the Israelites, mo the people that Moses led out of Egypt, they would put uh, the blood of a lamb on their doorpost. God instructed them that uh, just prior to their exodus that they were to uh, kill a lamb without blemish, a male, one year old, and they were to eat the meat along with unleavened bread and with bitter herbs, but then take the blood from that killed animal and smear it on the doorposts of their house. Think about your house, think about the front door, and think about putting blood on, around that doorpost. That's what they were to do. And when God, as the angel of death, went through their, that area, 
he would see that there's blood on the doorposts and he would not kill the firstborn in that household. Okay? And so he would pass over that house. He would pass over that house. The blood served to protect and to save all those inside. Isn't that important? The blood served to protect and to save all those who were inside. Now, the New Testament comes. Jesus gives instruction to His disciples, and these, these are the early verses of Luke 22. He instructs them to go ahead into the city and to prepare for the Passover feast. And then when the time comes, Jesus sits down, reclines at the table with the apostles, and He says, I have earnestly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. Uh, isn't that interesting? What, what, this is, what Jesus is saying is because Jesus was there with the first Passover. He knew everything about it. He knew all about the blood there and everything else. And now, as he's reclining at table with his disciples, he's saying, I have so earnestly wanted to, to be here with you and to celebrate this with you. But now, let me, let me change it a bit. <laughs> let me... Uh, augment it a bit, and he institutes what we know as the Lord's Supper, or Holy Communion, on the first day of the Passover feast. And his purpose is to show that he now is the Passover Lamb, that Jesus' blood is what saves. And just as the Lamb's body was broken, and the Lamb's blood was poured out, so would Jesus' body be broken and His blood poured out. And when God overlooked or passed over, those inside the house where the blood was on the doorposts, it was not because the people in the house deserved escape. It is because of the blood. It was because of the blood on the doorpost. And that those people trusted that if we rely on what God has said about the blood, then we will be safe. And so too, our salvation does not depend upon our goodness or all that we did. It's, it's the blood of Christ. And so it is, this Lord's Supper is a sign and it's a seal of this protection and preservation that we have in Jesus Christ. It was instituted by Christ Himself. So it's very interesting when you read these words in Luke 22, He says, I've earnestly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. And then He, he, he takes the cup, take this and, and, you know, pass it around among you, and then, so he's acting like the host. He's, 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 a, he's the one who's saying, okay, now we're going we're gonna to take this drink, now we're going to eat, and now we're going to drink uh, again, we're going to take this bread, and now we're going to take the, Jesus is the, is the host of the supper, and he's the one who breaks the bread, and he's the one who's pouring the wine, and he's explaining the meaning for what this is. This is my body, this bread that's broken for you. This is my blood, my blood that's given to you. So that it's the host that we're eating. <laughs> He's the host. And he, want, he, he gives it, and He Himself is the meal. He Himself is the great Paschal Lamb of God. This is the Lord's Supper. And it's a means of grace. Uh, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a benefit uh, to us. Um, we know, and I'm going to deal with this next time, but uh, getting into the various approaches to the Lord's Supper. But it is a meal of remembrance. Jesus said, do this as often as you uh, eat this bread and drink this cup. Do this in remembrance of me. So it is a, 
It's a memorial feast. It most certainly is that. It isn't only that, though, but it is that, um, where there's a, a very visible and vivid reminder to us uh, of what Christ has done for us on the cross. He gave Himself for us. Um, it's the gospel visible, the gospel visible for us, where we are um, reminded of His great sacrifice and our uh, forgiveness. So it's a meal of remembrance, pointing us back to the cross. But there are things happening when we partake of the Lord's Supper too. One is that it's a meal of, of unity. It unites us to Jesus Christ. Uh, and, and, you know, this is brought out in uh, question and answer 76 and such, where uh, we are united to Christ's death uh, and His suffering. In John 6, verse 46, Jesus says, He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me, and I in him. So that there's this covenant fellowship that takes place as we partake of this covenant meal, where Christ calls it the, the new covenant in my blood. We're united to Christ. We are His people. He is our Savior and our Lord. He is our God and testifies to us the closeness that exists between Christ and His body. Okay, so there's that uniting hap that happens um, as we partake of the Lord's Supper with Christ, but also with one another. But also with one another. Uh, we are united to fellow believers, one another. We, we sit together and we partake together. This is why I often will say, you know, take a bread and, and take a cup and bring it back to your seats, and then we will all partake together, because that's an expression of our unity together. We are united. We're one together. We sit together. We eat the same bread and the same wine, um, and in and through Jesus Christ, we are one, and this is a visible sign of that, um, that sacrifice of Jesus Christ brings us together together as nothing else can. <clears throat> if Christ didn't go to the cross, give Himself for us, it's very likely none of us would know each other. Isn't it? It's very likely. Maybe, maybe we'll, we might run across one another. As, you know, again, we're talking so hypothetical, it's weird to think about it. But... Um, but, the, the, but that Christ gave Himself and, and, and sacrificed Himself so that they, He would have a people, men and women, boys and girls, who were part of the church of Jesus Christ. And that church of Jesus Christ comes together because Christ gave Himself. And so the sacrament that points us to that brings us together and unites us together. His sacrifice brings us together like nothing else could possibly do. And, and further, it strengthens our faith. So it's a, it's a meal of remembrance. It's a meal of, of unity or uniting, but also strengthening our faith. It is a means of grace. Um, bread, of course, was a staple of food in those days, and wine was a staple for drink in those days. In, at that time. These are, uh, you know, main food staples and sources in the Middle East. And uh, they point to the fact that food and drink are essential for life. We all know that, of course. Food and drink are essential for our health and, and for our uh, uh, usefulness, our work, and, and, and so forth. We need that sustenance. And so, the body and blood of Christ are essential, like bread and like wine, like food and like drink. They are essential for our spiritual health and spiritual well-being. And without Christ and without what He has done, we could not live. We could not live spiritually. And what the Holy Spirit does is the Holy Spirit then applies that which Christ has done and accomplished to our lives and deepens and, and, and grows our understanding and our faith, even like, Lord willing, He's doing right now as we're contemplating it, we're thinking through it. Uh, the Lord will, the, you know, the Holy Spirit is, 
is probably making you even think of things that I'm not thinking of, <laughs> you know, about the Lord's Supper. Uh, you, you know, the Holy Spirit could do that. You, taking your, your history and your, uh, you know, your understanding and where you're at and, and, and giving you greater and deeper understanding. Um, and that gives us confidence and certainty. I really like that where the, this, you know, question uh, 75 really just brings out as surely as, so surely. You know, as surely as you see this bread and wine, so surely did Christ give his body. As surely as you taste it, so surely are you nourished. I mean, you know, there's just that, that confidence and that certainty. Um, or another way to put it is by, you know, partaking of the Lord's Supper, it removes doubt and removes the uncertainty. I've been in uh, some context where um, there are, have been those in particular, I think, you know, Reformed denominations um, where only a few people in the church would come forward to take the Lord's Supper, uh, just a few, because people would feel, I'm not worthy. I'm not worthy to take. So, it's a, it's a very wrong view, by the way, of the Lord's Supper, but it uh, comes into, so kind of, a, I don't know if it's a hyper-Calvinism or what, but uh, um, they refuse the supper because they don't feel worthy. They, they, there's we, still so much progress to go, and the supper then, the Lord's Supper becomes a meal for the arrived, <laughs> the, the, you know, the, sort of the super holy, um, the super saints. It's for them only. Uh, and I want to you know, encourage you to say that's not the case at all, at all. The Lord's Supper is given to us and meant for us, not, for, not because we've arrived, but because we're on that journey, and we need that sustenance. You know, the Lord is good, the Lord is kind, with all of its struggles and its insecurities. In, in the form that I read, most times when we partake the Lord's Supper, these words, I think, are very important, and I hope they are as comforting to you as they are to me. They say this, do not allow the weakness of your faith or your failures in the Christian life to keep you from this table, because it's given to us because of our weakness and because of our failures. Now, that's such a great comfort, that, that it's, it's given to us because we're weak, that's the Lord's goodness. Not because we've arrived. It's because we're weak, because we struggle. And the Lord gives that to us. Say, here's, here's some strength for you. Here's some food that you need. That's what the Lord is doing. It's this blessed thing that the Lord does for us. For us. And, and, and for those who truly so, are sorry for their sins and weakness and failures, and desire to get rid of them. This is a great blessing, the Lord says. I've given Christ for you. I've given Christ for you. And so what Jesus is doing by giving this institution of the Lord's Supper is He's reminding us that He is ever with us. And He's with us on the journey. And He's helping us on the journey and nourishing us on the journey. It's meant to raise our confidence in Jesus Christ and in His great salvation. So the Lord's Supper is a great means of grace uh, to us. Um, next time, the Lord willing, we'll be looking at uh, what does it mean when we say the bread is the body of Christ and the blood is the wine of Christ, or the, the the wine is the blood of Christ. We'll be looking into that and seeing how, how different churches have approached that in different ways, but, uh, and what is the right and true way to understand it. So let's bow our heads in prayer. Our Father in heaven, we thank you for your love for us in giving your Son, Jesus Christ. And we thank you, Lord, that that love is not only in the, at the one point of his sacrifice, but it's also expressed to us um, Oh, certainly in every moment of every day, every breath we take. But when we partake of the Lord's Supper, we see your love in nourishing us, in supporting us, 
in strengthening us, in fortifying us. Lord, we, we thank you. You are good, and we give you all the praise. Again, Lord, we thank you for our Savior, Jesus Christ, who ever lives, and, uh, and we rejoice that he is our head. We are his body and his bride. Come, Lord Jesus, come quickly. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.